What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Got another service video here for you. Um, I've been servicing a ton of regulators here lately and our two busiest times that we tend to service regulators of course is before Easter which is right before the boating and diving season starts and then right after Labor Day which is the at, here on our lake it's the end of the actual boating season and typically it's the end of diving season for a lot of people uh, simply because they just don't have time to do it this time of the year in the fall and winter months. Uh, their kids are back in school, they just don't have time off or whatnot, or maybe they're new to diving and they don't have equipment that is, um, you know, sufficient enough to dive in cold water. They don't have thick suits, they don't have this, maybe they don't have the, the indisposable incomes to travel all the time. So here in our area, a lot of divers will start their season before Easter and they'll end it right after Labor Day. And those tend to be our two busiest times that we actually service regs. Whether people bring it to us before Easter, we get all these regs serviced up for them, they dive throughout the summer, or the ones that did have them serviced up, they'll bring them to us at the end of the season. They'll go ahead and get them serviced up, ready for next year, and that way they can stole them and everything's good to go but I want to make a real quick video here and talk about why it's so important to check your hoses and even more important to not throw away the port plugs that go in a first stage when you first buy your regulator so what am I talking about well when you buy a regulator and this is an older reg this is an old decor here but when you first buy a regulator, obviously it's usually just a first stage and a second stage and nothing else. That's all you get with it. Obviously, you're going to have to buy the uh, alternate to go with it as well, usually a low pressure hose, which typically comes with a brand new BC, and then some type of high pressure hose, whether you're using a transmitter or maybe you're using, say, an air integrated computer or just a single, double, or triple gauge. But anyways, getting back on the first stage, they come with these port plugs in just like that. All we do is just take them out with an Allen head, we set them aside, we screw your hoses back in, and that's it as far as attaching hoses. And so the reason that you should hold on to these port plugs and never throw them away is because you may change, first of all, the hose configuration of your regulator. And when you do that, you may need to take a plug out and put it somewhere else. And that, that's one of the most common reasons you need to keep it. But more so the reason you need to keep it is for the little tiny O-ring. Now you would think, you know, why do I need that O-ring? Obviously on hoses, they send O-rings as well. So why do I need to keep the O-ring that comes when a hose comes with an O-ring? Well, there's a very specific purpose for it, and let me explain. When we service your regulator, the parts kits that we use come with a bunch of little O-rings, a bunch of silicone seeds or rubber seeds, a bunch of metal parts, depending on your manufacturer. They come with O-rings, and we actually replace these O-rings when we build or rebuild your system. Basically, all I do is I take the O-ring off with a little pick here. Um, in short, I throw the old flattened O-ring away. I get the brand new O-ring out of the service kit, and take the new O-ring and install it as simple as that. I put a little bit of lubricant on it, um, and then I install it back in your reg and kind of tighten it down. But once again, why is it important to you to keep the port plug and the O-ring if your service technician is going to do it? Here's why. Have you ever had a slight leak in a regulator hose, and maybe it's at the first stage, and you take your wrench and you tighten down and tighten down, and you really get these hoses nice and tight on there, which first of all, you don't really need to tighten them that tight. They are sealed with an O-ring, and as long as the O-ring's good, it's not been flattened out or used up or dry rotted, they're going to seal. So when you tighten these down, it's really just hand tight. You don't, you know, snug on it. Take your wrench, give just a little tiny love to it, and you're good to go, but you still got a leak. And that leak is simply from that O-ring. Now, obviously, during the service time frame, we're going to take the O-ring off, put a new O-ring on it, reinstall your hose to the first stage, and you're going to be good to go. But it's not necessarily time for a service. And what if this happens somewhere, say, out at a dive site, and you got a leak, and you need to fix that leak? This is something that you can fix without having to take it to a service technician. And one of the things that we teach you during the equipment techniques course is, is how to take a pick, how to take the O-ring off, how to get in your save a dive kit, get your little port plug out, and utilize that O-ring. That O-ring is the exact same size as the O-ring that's on the end of your hose. It's the same diameter, same size, same material, same everything. So you need to be holding on to these port plugs to go in your 
save a dive kit. Now, obviously here at the shop, we have tons of them. I got little peanut butter jars full of them. And my main little kit here, you can see all the port plugs I've got. And these are just some that we collect as we build regulators for people where we put them together. We just put them aside and collect them. Uh, a lot of people will come in, maybe they change the configuration, they need some port plugs. We give them away because we have an un ungodly amount of them here. So we give them away when somebody needs them. But for you as the typical diver, when you buy a regulator, and you maybe have that dive shop set your regulator up for you, meaning they put the hoses, they set the intermediate pressure, things like that. Ask them for the port plugs back. They are important to you. Like I said, you may be changing the hoses out, uh, changing configurations, and need a port plug to put back in. Or more importantly, you may have that slot leak out there, and you need to replace the O-ring without having to take it to a service technician. Once again, we teach you how to do that in the SSI Equipment Techniques course. This is something that we teach that you can do. You don't have to be factory trained to change that O-ring on the end of your hose. It's real simple to do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you just how simple it is. You take your hose, you take a pick, it's a little brass pick. You're gonna take it off, like so. Toss it in the trash can. You take your port plug, just like that. You take your O-ring, take your pick, dig up underneath it, and I just like to roll it out like that. There's my new O-ring. I'm gonna get me a little bit of lubricant here. If you don't have crystal lube, I'm just using crystal lube here, but if you don't have crystal lube, you can use the standard Trident lube here, just silicone lube. Get it any dive shop out there. And it takes just a little, you know, liberal amount. Just rub it in, keep it nice and lubricated. Now understand, this is a static O-ring. It's not a dynamic O-ring. That just simply means it doesn't move. You screw it in and that's it. It's not part of a piston or um, say a diaphragm system where the O-rings move around. This is a static O-ring. It doesn't actually take that much lube. So we're just gonna simply install it back on there. Be careful not to break it with your fingernails if you're using fingernails. Voila, as easy as that. And then all you've got to do is come over here, find out which port plug it goes in. Okay, on this particular one, it's going to go in this hole here. And I'm going to simply just get it started. And I'm going to turn it all the way down. Okay, when it stops, I stop. I'm going to take the appropriate size wrench. In this case, it's a 14 millimeter wrench. I'm going to put it on there. Apologize, this one's a little bit bigger, different reg system. And I'm going to give it just a little torque just that much didn't take much little tender love and care and that regulator is back up ready to go um, now this customer did bring me this reg to service obviously the whole regulator needed to be serviced i had to clean it re uh, rebuild the first stage rebuild the second stages but this is something you can do at home if you ever find a leak all you need to do is hold on to your port plugs because that o-ring is the exact size or same O-ring that goes on the end of your hoses that connect first stage, obviously, to the second stage. So guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it educational. If you did, definitely share it for me and definitely hit that like button. If you got any questions on equipment servicing or anything like that, or maybe you got questions specifically on, say, the equipment techniques course from SSI, drop me a comment down below. I know that's one of the courses that kind of get a bad rap to a lot of agencies. You know, it's equipment techniques. It's this, a lot of this stuff's common sense. Why do I need that? And you may not need that. If you have any knowledge on regulators, you may not actually need that class. However, there's a lot of new divers out there that don't understand what their equipment actually does, and that's the purpose of the course. We're going to teach them little tricks and techniques to keep their gear in good working order to get the best value or the best bang for their buck, and so that their gear, if you take good care of your gear, it'll take good care of you. So we teach that in that course. We find that it's a very valuable course. It's actually one, if you saw a previous video I did here recently, it's one of the courses we actually give away when someone buys a brand new reg set from us. We're gonna teach them that course free of charge. All they've gotta do is simply buy the, the digital kit for it and their certification for it. And the class itself, it's about a three to four hour class. We teach it to them free of charge by simply buying a reg set from us. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it educational. If you've got any questions, once again, please put it down in the comment section below. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.
Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.